Welcome to another episode of King's World. Okay, this is the second show in 2020. So, you know, we did the Arnold Classic preview last time. And this time, I want to catch up one more time with the questions. You guys got to understand, uh, please don't get upset if I don't get to your questions every week or if I don't get right back to you because it is tough. I get tons and tons and tons of messages and emails and text messages and Instagram and Facebook. You have no idea how many questions I get on a daily basis. So I'm doing my best to get back to you guys. I picked five good ones this time. This is going to be interesting. Some really good questions. So let's get to it. Five questions from the from the fans. Boom. All right. Question number one. Question number one comes from Melon Fit 1271M. Really? Can't you just shorten your name just a little bit? I'm just kidding. All right. So Melon says, what was your favorite show you ever competed in where you felt 100% and you were on top of your game. Okay, Melon. I would have to say it would be the 2003 Night of the Champions. Why? Okay. First of all, you got to understand the New York Pro is a good show. You know, everybody knows the the kids nowadays, you guys, you all know the New York Pro. It is a good show and it's getting better and better. But it's still not even close to being the Night of the Champions. Okay, the Night of the Champions, and when I was coming up and I was a kid and I was looking at the magazines and, and looking up to the sport, the top show in the world was the Mr. Olympia. The second biggest and toughest show in the world was the Arnold Classic. Right now, to be honest with you, the Arnold Classic is right there with the Olympia. But back then, it was the Olympia first, Arnold Classic, and then you had the Night of the Champions. The Night of the Champions was, was more like an international muscle fest. You had 50, 60, 70, even 80 competitors on stage at the same time. It was also at the Beacon Theater right here in New York City. I mean, folks, I've said it once, I said a thousand times, you have to compete here in New York. And back then, the fans were absolutely crazy and insane and so hyped up and yelling and screaming and cursing. And the judges, I remember one time Weinberger got up and started yelling back at the audience because they didn't like what they were, he didn't like what they were saying. That's New York. That's how crazy it was. Night of the Champions. 2003, I peaked. I was big as a house, hard as a rock. I had full concentration prep for the show. I was back in Virginia, my home, my gym, my area, my restaurants. I could focus and put the blinders on. Came in, there must have been about 70, 80 competitors on stage, on risers, and guess what? First call out, Victor Martinez, King Kamali, Craig Titus. It was a dream come true. It was absolutely amazing. Great, great battle, posing routine, did the Terminator, brought the house down. To me, that was one of the best King Kamalis I've ever presented to the world. And the show off the charts, just love it. Yeah, I'm sorry, I really, really feel bad for you kids nowadays who didn't get to experience Night of the Champions the way it was in the Beacon Theater. You know, maybe one day we can bring that back. God bless, man. Night of the Champions. Question number two comes from Anthony underscore 133. Anthony asks... You've talked a lot about the current crop of the IFBB elites as having that spongy look, all right? Um, can this problem be resolved? Okay, Anthony, you're trying to start something here, and I like that. You know me. I like to grind. I like to, I like the controversy and all that stuff. Okay, so the spongy looks. How do we fix it? Simple. Stop taking so much insulin. That's it. It's the insulin. See, Back in when I was doing it, I've said this before, we did insulin the last couple of days before the show, and in the off season, we barely touched it unless it was a weak body part that we were trying to bring up. We didn't do it like today. Now it is a daily regimen in the gear protocol. Insulin, insulin, N, L, R, fast acting, slow acting, during the workout, intra workout, post workout. That's why they're so massive and they look spongy. It's the insulin. Pull the insulin out, start suffering again, get back to old school dieting and training and all that other stuff and the, and the grinding with the low carbs. 
That's the key. You want to bring back those incredible 1990 physiques with those with that crispy, crispy conditioning. Bring back the low carbs. Right now, it seems like there's a big hype going on in the internet. Ronnie Coleman and Dorian Yates are tearing apart the current Mr. Olympia and the crop that's coming up, saying that their conditioning's not there. Listen, I'm not going to tear apart what people are doing. They're, you know, Brandon Curry goes to Kuwait, he kills himself, he pulls himself away from his family, his wife, his children. Okay, and he suffers and he's Mr. Olympia. God bless him, congratulations to him. But the physiques of the 90s were different from the physiques of today. Why? Because of the insulin. Pull out the insulin, go back to grinding, go back to suffering to the low carbs like Kevin Lebroni. Remember, one of, remember my, one of my previous King's World episodes? The man ate fish and vegetables for seven weeks straight. And you wonder why Kevin looked the way he did. Take out the insulin. Question number three comes from Big Kid slash Swole. Okay, he asks, is squatting absolutely necessary for building massive legs? Good question. Okay, yes and no. All right, so I'm gonna explain to you what that means. When you're starting out and you want to build a good, strong base, yes, you have to squat and you have to squat correctly, deep and heavy. Now, when you start to advance in your career, when you built a good base and you're starting to get up on stage, you're starting to get that size and the fullness and the shape and all that stuff, yes, you have to continue to squat. But eventually you get to a point where machines can take over. You don't have to because you get that supreme mind-muscle connection and you can start focusing on the negatives and the pump. In the beginning, squatting is not just for legs. That's something that you kids have to understand. Squatting builds the entire body. You never see somebody who squats heavy that doesn't have a pretty decent upper body as well because it builds everything. You're putting everything into that squat when you're going down with five, six, seven, eight hundred pounds. That's just how the body works. You are using, you're utilizing every single muscle to get that weight down and back up again. As you advance in your career, as you start to build, as you start to get a little bit older, you have to pull back. You have to pull back. Why? Because if you don't, you're going to end up injuring yourself and end up crippled. That's something you don't want. It's not worth it to live out your life in a wheelchair or live out your life on crutches or having the pain just standing up and walking around. It's not worth it. Utilize the machines. Be smart. Look at Dexter Jackson. Show me a video of Dexter Jackson squatting. You're not going to find it. You know why? Because Charles Glass utilizes machines, negatives, and pumps to build Dexter's physique at his advanced age that he's at right now. Okay? So yes, in the beginning, it is necessary. Intermediate, yes, it is necessary. Towards the end, no, it's not. Use the machines. Question number four comes from Riley Fit Forever. Riley asks, in your expert opinion, who is the best bodybuilding guru ever? Man, another one that's trying to start some stuff. Okay, all right, Riley. All right, so with what I've seen, with what I've experienced, and I've worked with the best there is to work with, okay? Now, I'm gonna put two people under one category because uh, I'll explain why. When you have George Farah and you have Hani Rambot, you put those two guys under the same category, and I'm gonna explain to you why. Because those two guys, Learned, stole, took, appreciated, whatever the hell term you want to use. From They got everything from Chad Nichols. Chad taught them everything that they know. They advanced it, took it, and gradually made it into their own thing. And now they're doing their own thing. The Georges and the George and Hani. But it all goes down to Chad. Milos, love the guy to death. I've worked with him. I've worked with Joe McNeil. I've worked with... Uh, disgusted or Magnum, as you call them, from Ohio. I've worked with them all, okay? And I've got knowledge from all these guys. And believe me, I learned a lot from every single person that I've worked with, I learned a lot from. But the question is who I think is the best. My opinion, the godfather, the big daddy, the guru of them all is Chad Nichols. Chad was, when I was coming up through the national ranks, when I didn't understand what to do the last week, when I didn't understand the protocols of the off season and how to do it, all this stuff, it all came into sym symbiotic merger like this when I met Chad Nichols. Chad is the one who taught me all these things. Chad's wife, 
Kim Chevesky, she was four-time Miss Olympia, one of the best of all time. Chad had Ronnie, had Nasser, had Flex, had Chris. I mean, he had Hall of Famers that he was helping and working with. And I was blessed enough to be the next person in line and he took me in and we won the nationals and we won rookie of the year and we went to the Mr. Olympia and we went to the Arnold and we beat the t some of the best Hall of Famers. We did everything that we had to do. Chad Nichols, the secret to Chad is the man remains calm. <laughs> All right, Chad is the guy, I'm telling you, he, he never gets excited. He just sees what you got and he goes, all right, you know, guess, guess you look good and keep doing what you're doing. Blah, blah, blah. And then he moves on to the next guy. And yeah, right, you look good. You know, I, I would see, I would really be in my room and I would, you know, I was known for the, the crispiness to the side of my legs. Nobody had that like inch and a half indentation that I had in my hamstring. And I would be like, all right, when I hit my side chest, he's going to go nuts. He never did. He just looked at me. He goes, looks good, man. And then uh, keep doing what you're doing. Chad Nichols, his knowledge what he learned working with his wife and what he learned, what he did, uh, he took the sport from here to here. And he did that with, well, I mean, obviously he did that with Ronnie Coleman, but he also did that with all of us. I mean, he just took every single one of us and made us just that much better with his knowledge and his eye. Um, I'm doing my best right now to get Chad in to King's World for a super mega interview regarding nutrition, gear, uh, current state of bodybuilding, old school, Ronnie, Dorian. I wanna talk to him about everything. So I'm working on that right now. Let's all pray that Chad has enough time to come and give us this blessing for this interview. Chad Nichols, the best ever. Question number five comes from Kyle MCU 111 Kyle says, King, I really need your help. I keep seeing and reading that food slash eating is the most important factor of the bodybuilding game. Unfortunately, I have no appetite. What can I do? King, please help me. All right. Kyle. Kyle, Kyle, Kyle. You are not alone, my friend. There are so many people out there. I get this all the time from people because if you follow me on Instagram, which you should be, even you haters who have all this talking, you should follow me on Instagram because I post everything on there. Pictures, comments, this, that, lifestyle, going out, you name it, it's on there. When it comes to this, this is a big issue. I even know big, like 290, 300 pound guys who have a hard time eating because they're so used to eating one or two, or maybe three, you know, big heavy meals, large meals, like a McDonald's or something like that, or and then be satisfied with it. So when they see seven or eight times a day and eating clean foods, it just doesn't register with their bodies. And I've seen this happen to myself. I've gone through it too. It gets to a point where you look at a piece of chicken and you want to throw up. You look at a piece of fish, you smell fish and you start gagging. I get it. How to solve this problem. Throughout my career, I've seen and I've experimented with a couple things that actually work. Let's go to natural route first. Okay, intermittent fasting. What does that mean? Starve yourself. <laughs> it helps. It works. Uh, there's so many different ways to do this type of fasting. There is the 24-hour fast. There is the, the singular meal fast. There is the uh, one day on, one day off fasting. All of that stuff, you have to experiment to see which one works best for you. What works best for me and what I recommend to all my clients is singular meal fasting. What does that mean? You eat meal one, you eat meal two, you have absolutely no appetite for meal three, okay? What you wanna do is take a handful of aminos, some free form and some branch chains, and a little bit of water, and fast for another two to three hours. So you have two hours between, two to two and a half hours between each meal, you skip that meal, some aminos, and now you have five hours, which you didn't eat. It's gonna work. If you keep doing that, it will keep stimulating and stimulating, okay? The fasting works. Now let's look at the RX way. The one thing that I found out that in the past, I would say five or six years that I've experimented with is GHRP6. GHRP6, you can get it from any peptide website there is in the world, it's readily available. You take, I'm not, remember, I don't say doses, that's not what I do, I'll just say how to do it. If you take GHRP6, 10 minutes before each meal, I guarantee you, you will be starving. You will have that, oh my God, I'm hungry type feeling when you take it. GHRP6 doesn't do anything but stimulate the appetite. I've noticed that I've done blood work afterwards to see if my GH levels will boost. No, none of that 
it happens. It's for appetite. So intermittent fasting, GHRP6, if you don't have the appetite. Okay, so here we go. That was another episode of King's World. I hope we all got a little bit smarter. I hope you guys gained a little bit more knowledge from the king. And like I said a few minutes ago, we're trying to get the master blaster, the diet doc himself, Chad Nichols, in here for an interview. It will be a two, two or maybe three part series because the man is an absolute genius when it comes to the sport. Let's get him in. Until then, peace, be safe, stay healthy, and as always, peace out. Bitches.